So time to continue with Highland Radio's preview of the Tokyo Olympics taking place this summer. And uh, another Donegal man that is heading that way is Michael Black. Michael, it's good to see you and good to talk to you. Great to be here, Oshie. Thanks very much. Well, Michael, you, of course, are national head coach with uh, with Triathlon Ireland. Uh, you've got a team of two heading out that direction. He's leaving on, on Wednesday. But from your own personal point of view, it's going to be a first Games for you. Exciting time. Yeah, uh, first games, uh, I suppose, in a professional capacity. Uh, I've attended other games as a spectator, uh, but this is the first time as a uh, as a coach and, and I suppose uh, looking looking after a team. Um, and it's uh, like an athlete, it's, uh, as well as a coach, this is something you dream of and work hard towards and very few people get the opportunity to do it. So, yeah, I'm very much in a privileged position to, especially in the times that we're at at the minute, to even be getting on a plane and travelling anywhere. But uh, added bonus is obviously going to going to Olympic Games, yeah. Yeah. Were you worried along the way that these games mightn't happen and maybe the chance might might be missed by it? Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, with the cancellation of it last year, uh, we had everything prepped right up until um, uh, hopefully it would take place in the summer of 2020. But unfortunately, it was cancelled at the last minute, which, um, yeah, you get worried. Was it going to ever uh, happen at all? Or were we going to just um, uh, keep rolling over and rolling over? But thankfully... Uh, we got things going, and um, uh, the Japanese government are, are very keen to to have the games going, and they've done everything possible to to make it a safe games, as well as the Olympic Federation of Ireland here and all other federations around the world. And I think the athletes are are very very keen to to get the games going now and not not postpone it for another year. So everyone's just keen to get on the plane uh, and get the job done. Okay, tell us about your your athletes. Then Russell White and Caroline Hayes are are the two who have qualified for Tokyo, Michael. Yeah, we've, so we have two athletes, a male and a female, uh, Russell White from Banbridge in Northern Ireland, and we have Carolyn Hayes from Limerick. So these are two athletes that, are, that have qualified. Um, each federation gets uh, two plus two, so two male, two female slots, and it's based on a, on a point system. So obviously the higher you finish up in the points, the, the more chance you have to, to gain a slot for the, for the nation, for the country. So and once that's happened, then there's a selection process where um, you get uh, the National Federation holds a selection meeting and they select the best person possible at that time to go to the game. So at the end of the qualification, yet yeah, we had we had two, a male and a female uh, available and uh, qualified to go. Was it a hectic qualification uh, end of schedule? Uh, Michael, you were globetrotting over the last six months or so trying to get the rankings for, for both athletes. Was it uh, as hectic as what the likes of Mark English had to go through to, to get his place in Tokyo? Yeah, uh, very similar, probably probably even more so because, um, for instance, in, in, in Mark's situation, you know, and, and a lot of the athletes, they, they just try and go for one time, so to speak, to get that qualifying time. Whereas with triathlon, it's the top 55 uh, female athletes and the top 55 male athletes in the world. Uh, and by the time you take out the slots for the relay team and the, the, the national country where it's being held in gets a couple of slots and other slots are given out, there's very few slots left, maybe only roughly between 25 to 29 slots available to any male or female athlete. So the chances of actually qualifying um, outright is, is very, very slim. Um, and the races are spread around the world, uh, typically all the time, even in, outside of COVID times. But what happened here is races got cancelled um, and it made the window of opportunity even tighter. So instead of ha maybe having, say, 12 opportunities to qualify, it was condensed into six races over six weeks in six different countries and three continents. So we only stopped the qualifying uh, travel, I suppose, in the last two weeks, which uh, for Russell especially was in Hatulco in Mexico. Carolyn secured a spot uh, a lot earlier than that, a, a few races back. Um, so, yeah, it was very, very, I suppose, stressful time for the athletes who were already a year behind in terms of their qualifying, but now had to try and work out how they were going to logistically get around the world safely, um, have the opportunity to get to a race with, maybe testing positive or just staying fit and then perform weekend after weekend um, around the world. So you had to take into account um, uh, jet lag, um, not getting your proper training, not having the support and the resources around you um, and just being up for just going 100% max every single weekend for six weeks in a row. Um, so luckily, as I say, Carolyn, she qualified um, uh, earlier than that. Russell, uh, uh, went right up right to the wire in the last race in Atulco in Mexico uh, a couple of weeks back. 
and he got word then that he he qualified also so um and yeah the covid situation makes it a hell of a lot uh, more complicated so even for us to fly out tomorrow i've had a test yesterday had a test two days before that we're having antigen tests every couple of days and then when we travel to the airport we'll have more tests and then we're getting tested every single day when we're there in an the athlete village and in the holding camp so it's yeah logistically it's i said to someone yes it's kind of gone beyond sport at this stage with the with the amount of um uh, the admin that you have to do with it but here look it'll all be worth it and end up once we sit in that plane and close our eyes and go to sleep for a few hours and, yeah. and it's, all, up and, and, it's yeah. all about crazy uh, so it is michael the, the the environment that that we live in at the moment and the, the current climate there under under covid and it's affecting all sorts of walks of life but uh, i'm just thinking there what russell had to go through over the last number of weeks to get his place would take its toll on the body and i suppose this is where your role within the camp is is more so important that you have to try and have him in tip-top shape now come come tokyo yeah, it, you, I think in that sense, with the qualifying in the last kind of six to eight weeks, it's about just trying to maintain, stay healthy at one. That there's not a massive amount you can do in terms of uh, physical fitness or getting adaptation towards getting fitter in that point. It's just a matter of uh, trying to be sharp and be as healthy and as be as uh, less fatigued as you can in between flights. So, yeah, it takes a lot of kind of thought you know, where do you get the tipping point in that? How much do you do or how little can you get away with without uh, tipping him over the edge where he goes into another race, which is so important. Every single race is more important than the next because you just keep gaining points. So some days you just have to say, okay, today we're not training or today we're taking it really easy because another hard session is just not viable at the minute because we're getting on a plane tomorrow and we're flying 12 hours around the world and then you're going to be busted for that next day. And so there's a lot of things outside of, probably what you can do in your own professional coaching expertise um you're you're having to think like more of a more of a friend situation there because they're it's a stressful situation they've got so much things going around their head and there's massive pressure on them to perform week in week out and we forget that they're just human so even for me as a coach i was wrecked just traveling alone so i can't imagine what it would be like to put your training on top of that and the pressure then of having to perform at 100 percent on that saturday or sunday of the week so yeah, it does take a lot of um, a lot of kind of thought into what you structure and what you put down on paper for them every day of the week. Um, but being there with them every single day does help. So again, I was traveling with them, so you see the dynamics of what goes through their head and uh, and the psychological um, games that goes on. And um, yeah, you have to dig deep into your own expertise and think, you know, what is best for the athlete at the time and what is going to give them the best opportunity to perform on that day. And I suppose that's what you that's what you're there to do that's what your job is and you have to get the, the best out of them but at the end of the day you're dealing with people and i think that's the that's the key factor here and you have to be you have to show empathy towards that and make sure you clear have a good communication between the two people that are there and um and hopefully at the end up you get your result and luckily yeah we got a result and and uh, now we just have to go and perform again one more time for one big last dance what would be the perfect result for, for you guys for, for a triathlon ireland uh, where would you like to see your your athletes russell and, and carolyn uh where would you like to see them perform and uh, end up with what's seen as a good result in tokyo michael yeah i'd love to see them on the podium that would be great <laughs> is that realistic um, is, yeah, it? is that a realistic uh, target for them? I suppose triathlon is a triathlon is a very dynamic sport um, in general, and even with the dynamics of uh, of what's happening around us at the minute, and then the, the dynamics of a race, anything can happen. Um, we 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 have kind of internal targets and strategic targets, which our first one was to get a male and a female on the start line, which which we've obviously achieved. Once you get to that point, then it's it's very very hard to dictate what what the situation is going to be. Um, I think, you know, anywhere inside that kind of top 20, 25 for any of the athletes, um, anything more than that is, is, a, is, a, is a really a, a fantastic performance. But again, we just don't know because we can't go and pass form or anything uh, with our own athletes and then even the athletes that are out there because of the situation that we've been in the last 12 months where everybody's preparation is upside down. There's no, no one has had a, a, a lovely transition where you can go and do your your heat adaptation, your altitude camp, you can stay there for your three months and build it and build it and build it to get to a point where you peak. Uh, there's very, very few people who are going to be in the start line in Tokyo who are probably going to be at their peak um, because of the situation leading into it. it has not been ideal, uh, far from ideal. 
So in that situation, it's, it's, it's open to anybody. You're always going to have your favourites who are going to turn up and you can nearly rubber stamp on them where they're going to finish. I think anywhere outside that top 10 and down is, is, an, is an open race for anybody. Um, and the conditions are going to be so tough. Um, they're going to be, when we went there two years ago for the test event, first thing in the morning when the race was anywhere between half six and seven o'clock in the morning, it was over 30 degrees and 95% humidity. And the water temperature is 29 degrees. So to give you an indication, if you go into any pool uh, around the country, they sit between 28 to 29 degrees. So that's how hot it is in the water. So there, there's no cooling effect even from getting into the water. It actually gets worse. Um, so... Yeah, it's, for us, we want to obviously get the guys there, um, perform as best they possibly can on the day, and uh, whatever the result will be, will be. Um, but again, I think anything from that 10 to 15 downwards is is really open to, to open to anybody. From your own personal point of view, Michael, you're an, another of the Donegal contingent uh, heading that direction, and we've been yeah. speaking to, to a few of them over the last couple of weeks in the lead-up to Tokyo. What do you want to get out of it yourself, Michael? Because it's, it's a big experience for you in a different capacity. You've been at previous games, but now you're going in, in a coaching capacity. And on the plane back, what do you hope to have achieved yourself out of the whole thing, Michael? Yeah, and it's, I suppose it's very hard to take time to reflect on your own uh, performances and what you do get out of that. And I suppose with the lead up to this and because it's been so hectic, I, I genuinely haven't even really thought about that, to be honest. And I think the only time that we'll get maybe to do that is on the road out and the road back again. Um, but for me, again, you know, it's essentially about the athletes at the end of the day. We're here to do a job and I, I want them to have the best experience they possibly can. And my role is to provide as much support as I can when I'm there and even now. Like we're in Donegal at the minute, we have all the athletes here, um, and that was purposely done. But the f facilities around here are fantastic. The resources here, we have great support. We have the network of people here. Um, the guys loved it here. So, um, yeah, for me personally, yeah, obviously I I'm going to represent my country in a coaching capacity. So, um, first and foremost, I want to be there for the athletes and provide the best support for them. After that, if I can absorb as much of the environment as I possibly can and, and take a moment just to step back and go, you know, th th this is phenomenal. And I think we have to do that because if we don't, you'll just, you'll burn out and you won't take the experience. So I, I will hope to at some point out there when they start on the start line and I can take a step back and just take a look around me and take a couple of photographs and go, yeah, th this is, this is, I suppose, the pinnacle of where you want to get in your professional career and uh, maybe on the return flight, uh, uh, sit back and just maybe take a few notes and reflect and, and see where we can go. Because for us, the qualifying starts for Paris 2024 in January. So as soon as we come back on, we do the review and we've got the World Championships in uh, October. So it's back on the, back on the merry-go-round again. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, I hope to take time to reflect at some point, yeah. I know you have your, your team here and your athletes here in Donegal for the last couple of weeks, Michael, before you head away. And Con Doherty is, is the reserve athlete there. Uh, you've also got a very, very exciting young lady. Uh, I heard her name mentioned before by a few people. You have her here in, in, in Donegal. She's from County Mayo. Listen, she's got relations from Donegal, and her name is Maeve Gallagher. And she'll be yep. one to watch out come Paris next time around. Is that fair to say, Michael? <laughs> yeah, no, Maeve is, Maeve is a, an exceptional athlete and has, has represented her country in a number of different sports, including uh, cycling and athletics as well. We're, uh, I suppose we're very blessed to have her in terms of triathlon. Um, I'm sure other people in my position and performance directors around other than us in the government bodies of sport would love to have her. But um, yeah, she's definitely one, for, uh, definitely one for the future in the next three years. Um, she just turned 20. Um, phenomenal biker. Uh, phenomenal runner and yeah a world class uh, triathlete obviously at the end of it so yeah she'd be one that we would hoping to um, uh, put a lot of work into over the next three years and as I say that qualifying starts in January for 2024 um, it's a two year window of opportunity to get as many points as possible um, yep she has strong relations here in the Jennings um, and Donegal which uh, if anyone knows them guys they're they're, 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 they're very good athletes in their own right uh, and uh she definitely has that steely determination shown by by some of the Jennings over the years. So um, I'm sure she has uh, her own aspirations where she wants to go. Um, and again, yeah, we took them to Donegal here. So we have Russell here, James Edgar, and a fantastic triathlete who will be um, uh, hopefully going to the Commonwealth Games and the uh, and the uh, Olympics in the coming years. Con Doherty again, relationship uh, with Donegal in terms of his family from uh, Clonmany and then the Shown area. Um, so yeah. 
in the future, we would hope to have these guys back here because um, we know it can work here and we know that the environment here is to to foster the to, to the, the performance of these guys in the future. So, yeah, yeah, keep an eye out for them and hopefully we'll be we'll be there in a couple of years. I know it's a, a very exciting time to you, for you, Michael, and this is the pinnacle of the sport for, for triathlon. So it is. Um, we're speaking here the day before you jump on a plane. It's like Christmas yeah. for you. You sleep tonight, will you? <laughs> Have you, have you seen what I had to do before I got off? I don't think there'll be much sleeping. Um, it's it's kind of lastminute.com for a lot of things. You you prepare everything and uh, and you think that, that, that the day before, the two days before, you'll be sitting back and maybe throwing a few things in a bag. But um, the guys were, were just out of the swimming pool this morning there. They've got a, a bike session now to do and they'll be doing a run in the evening time before um, myself and Russell starts packing bags. So, um yeah, it'll be exciting. Um, yeah, I don't think there'll be much sleep done. Um, the admin side of the COVID, which is with so many apps on our phone to upload all the kind of documentation that just to get there. So I think a lot of the evening will be spent making sure of everything printed off and come with come with your folder of stuff to the airport in the morning to make sure that we just get through the airport. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the biggest stress for everybody. Um, the other stuff is is easy done. We're well used to traveling around the world, but just the paperwork and the making sure that you've got your QR codes for your apps for the Japanese government and uh, and your hard copies of all your COVID tests is probably going to what's going to keep me up tonight. Yeah, definitely. Well, listen, Michael, good to talk to you and we wish you the best of luck with your, your Tokyo trip to the Olympic Games to you and your team, uh, Team Triathlon Ireland uh, for the, the coming games. It's going to be spectacular. Enjoy it and have a nice one and a safe one. Lovely. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Ashin. Take care.